Welcome. I'm going to talk about efficient, perfectly secure computation with optimal resilience. I'm Gilad Asheron from Bar Ilan University, and this is a joint work with Itai Abraham and Avishai Anai. So in the setting of secure multi-party computation, we have some set of mutually distrustful parties, each has some private input, and the parties wish to compute some joint function of their inputs while preserving some security properties such as privacy, correctness, and so on. One of the seminal results in secure computation is that of Benor, Goldwasser, and Wittgerson in 1988. It says that secure computation is possible in the semi-honest settings with perfect security assuming that the adversary corrupts at most one half of the parties. In the malicious settings, the adversary can corrupt at most one third of the parties. Both results are tacked. Perfect security means that the adversary can be computationally unbounded, and protocols in these settings are usually also adaptively secure and secure under concurrent composition once, once they satisfy some natural requirements. What is the communication complexity of the protocol? For computing a function f, we first represent it as an arithmetic circuit C. Then, the communication complexity of the protocol is n squared times times the size of the circuit in the semi-honest setting. And in the malicious settings, we have that the adversary can slow down the protocol, but it cannot break security. Thus, we have both optimistic case and pessimistic case. Where the adversary, uh, in the optimistic case, where the adversary does not slow down the protocol, the communication complexity is n to the 4 times the size of the circuit. In a pessimistic case, where the adversary does successfully slow down the protocol, we have n to the 6 times um, the size of the circuit. Our result, we're going to show a protocol uh, where we improve both the optimistic and the pessimistic cases. And we show a protocol where um, the optimistic case is n cubed times the size of the circuit. And in the pessimistic case, it's n to the 4 times the size of the circuit. Another way to view our improvement is as follows. So in BGW, in the semi-honest settings, the total communication complexity per each multiplication in the circuit is the communication complexity of secret sharing times the number of parties, n. In a malicious case, we have to use verifiable secret sharing instead of just secret sharing. But now we need much more secrets to share. In the BGW protocol, this requires sharing of n squared elements per multiplication. Our result, we show how to match the same amount of secrets as in the semi-honest case and have only linear number of VSSs. In addition, we have some bonus. Consider a circuit G that has L inputs and M outputs of multiplication depth 1. In other words, this is a polynomial of degree 2. Think that G is large, while L and while L and M are relatively small. To compute such a circuit, BGW requires the amount of VSSs that are proportional to the size of the inputs and outputs of G, plus also something that depends on the size of the circuit. In our protocol, we can securely compute such a circuit with the number of VSSs that is proportional only to the input and output size of the circuit, and it is completely uh, independent of the number of multiplications in G. This can also be generalized to multiplication to circuits with multiplication depth greater than one, while we only need to pay the amount of wires that exist between the layers, and we are independent of the number of multiplications in each one of the layers. Not that this means that the communication complexity uh, is sublinear in the circuit size. This is similar to R1CS in zero knowledge, and for the best of our knowledge, this is the first time that this appears in, perfect, in the perfect setting. As an example, consider the task of matrix multiplication. This is a circuit which, in which the number of inputs and outputs is relatively small, something like m squared, while the number of multiplications, at, each, at least when we implement this circuit naively, is m cubed. This means that BGW will require this amount of uh, VSSs, it's n squared time m, times m cubed, 
Well, our protocol, we improve, first of all, uh, n squared to n uh, for any circuit. And for this particular circuit, we can also compute it from in m squared instead of m cubed. Some related works. So our setting is the case of constant around pair multiplication with perfect security, malicious security, and optimal resilience. This means that at most uh, one third of the parties are corrupted. In that case, we achieve the following communication complexity. We have n to the cube in the optimistic case, n to the four in the pessimistic, and the round complexity is proportional to the depth, to the multiplication, multiplicative depth of C. There are more efficient uh, protocols in terms of communication complexity in the perfect setting that are based on player elimination technique, which uh, the best protocol here even achieves linear dependency on N, the number of parties. In that technique, players that are detected cheating during the protocol are removed from the protocol, and then we need to repeat some part of the computation. This increases the round complexity of the protocol for shallow circuits. Moreover, for circuits with multiplication depth 1, our protocol can also obtain communication complexity that depends only on the input and output size of the circuit and is independent of the size of the circuit. And it is unclear if a similar technique can be implemented in the other line of works that are based on player elimination. As such, those kinds of protocols are formally incomparable where it seems that for shallow, wide circuits, our protocol is more preferable, while for large depth circuits, uh, it is kind of clear that uh, this approach is, is better. Before proceeding to the technical part of the talk, I am going to assume some familiarity with uh, the semi-honest version of BGW with simplification of Geranao, Rabin, and Rabin. I will also assume some familiarity with the verifiable secret sharing or protocol of BGW, or that of Feldman. Uh, those who want to review these protocols are welcome to follow those two links that appear now on the screen. So our starting point is the protocol for computing multiplication gates in BGW. Just take a step back, the BGW protocol follows the paradigm of secure computation based on secret sharing, in which the parties evaluate or emulate the execution of a circuit that implements the functions that they wish to compute, while hiding each value, the value on each wire in the circuit, uh, using a secret sharing scheme. The parties emulate the computation of the protocol gate by gate, while the parties run a secure protocol for computing value of an output wire of each one of the gates using their shares on the input wires. So now we are looking at um, the protocol for multiplication gate. The parties hold shares on the two input uh, wires. So this is what we have on, over here. Each party PI holds A alpha I, B alpha I for some degree T polynomial AX and BX respect respectively. And the goal is that each party needs to hold a share on the output wire, some C alpha I, for some degree T polynomial, satisfying that the constant term is the multiplication of the two constant terms over here. The BGW protocol shows how to do it, or essentially shows how to do it, and how to reduce this multiplication with no dealer, where no party knows A, B, and C, to n executions and building blocks of uh, execution of the same building block of multiplication with a dealer where there is a party that knows a b and c so multiplication with a dealer is the following functionality each party pi uh, holds some share on some polynomial where there is a dealer pk that also knows the two uh, polynomials a k x and b bkx and the goal is that uh, pi will hold a share ck on alpha i for some degree t polynomial in which the constant term 
is the multiplication of those two polynomials. And again, there is a dealer that knows now CK of X. If the dealer fails, then the party simply recover the constant term of, um, of the two polynomials that were shared. Now let's remove, um, I'm removing the subscript uh, AK for gravity. And let's take a look how BGW implemented this functionality. So the protocol, in their protocol, the dealer holds two polynomials, A and B, and the goal is to actually uh, share a polynomial C satisfying that the constant term is the multiplication of those two polynomials, of the constant term of those two polynomials. Um, now, what he's going to do is going to choose such polynomial C of X and share it using a verifiable secret sharing. So now at this point, each other party, which is not a dealer, holds one share on the polynomial A, one share on the polynomial B, and one share on the polynomial C. The dealer wants to prove that this relationship uh, holds, and to do that, it's, it's going to define D additional polynomials, D1 to DT, such that this, this equation holds. Okay, now let's take a look what we have over here. So we have A times B. This is going to bring, to give us a polynomial of degree 2T. And then we're going to have a D poly, T polynomials where our goal is essentially to reduce or to remove all the T leading coefficients of the polynomial A times B. This requires N VSSs in total to prove this. Now the way the protocols work is that each party gets all the shares, so after the, the dealer shares those polynomials, each party holds uh, A alpha i, B alpha i, and also has D1 alpha i to, do t, to DT alpha i, and um, it can verify that this relationship actually works. Now if this works for all the honest parties, where we have 2T plus 1 honest parties, this is going to define a unique polynomial and this guarantees that actually C um, on 0 actually uh, is A times 0, B times 0 minus something that uh, all of those, uh, because we multiply by X to L, those do not affect the constant term. So this guarantees that actually C on zero equals A on zero, B on zero. Now the dealer shares those polynomials, each party verifies that uh, this relationship holds, and if not, it's going to broadcast a complaint, and then the parties can reconstruct its share because all the polynomials out of degree T, we can reconstruct and check publicly that this relationship sold. Now, this requires linear amount of VSSs in the number of parties, and this seems uh, even essential because to remove one, uh, once we um, share a polynomial of degree T, uh, because the adversary controls T corrupted parties, um, this doesn't give us a lot of uh, degree of freedom. So we get, we also we only hide one coefficient in that polynomial. In secret sharing, usually we put the secret as a constant term. Here we're going to put the secret in the leading coefficient, and essentially we only hide one coefficient. Now, to remove t coefficients, it seems necessary to uh, share t polynomials. What we're going to do in this work, we're going to show how to do this exact uh, functionality, how to implement this protocol with just one single VSS instead of having linear amount of VSSs. And the key idea is that maybe we can do secret sharing of a polynomial of degree 2t instead of a polynomial of degree t. How can we do that? So before we actually proceed, let's just take one step back. So um, essentially, we are going to um, we're going to follow a different invariant 
than that of BGW. We assume that each wire is hidden using a bivariate polynomial of degree t in both variables and not just a univariate polynomial as in BGW. This makes the following changes that we see over here in the functionality. Um, and the goal is uh, to get two univariate polynomial shares on the output wires, like we have over here. We know that this uh, invariant removes another building block from BGW, and without it, our current improvement is not going to actually reduce the communication complexity. So we need to take also this technique in order to actually get the improvement over BGW. Okay, so how do we share a polynomial of degree 2t? Uh, or what happens if we take the verifiable secret sharing protocol of BGW and try to use it for sharing a degree 2t polynomial? So again, I'm going to assume here some familiarity with the protocol for verifiable secret sharing. There is a link over here that you can, uh, you can scan and see the protocol uh, in detail. So in our case, the dealer is going to uh, distribute a bivariate polynomial in degree 2t in x and degree t in y. In the first one, the dealer is going to send, it's going to define the share of part pi as the evaluation of the polynomial where we fix the y uh, with a y part and also going to define a giy where we going to fix the x part in, in the polynomial, in the bivariate polynomial. In the first round of the protocol, the dealer sends to each party its two univariate shares, its two univariate polynomials. Now that f is of polynomial, is a univariate polynomial of degree 2t, while g is a univariate polynomial of degree t. Then, exactly as in uh, BGW, we're going to extend subshells. I'm going to evaluate I and PI. I'm going to evaluate FI and GI on the point J. I'm going to send that to party PJ. Each party checks that whatever it receives, that's the third round or the end of the second round. Each party is going to um, see all the, round, all the values that it received. And then it's going to check that it's the same as the one that expected as were sent by the dealer. If not, it's going to complain. The dealer will have to open uh, those that uh, have uh, false complaints. And at the end, we're going to have a complete resolution phase where each party checks that whatever was broadcasted fit to the view, fit to the shares that they have. And if so, they are going to broadcast good. We are going to accept the dealer, um, the shares of the dealer, once we have 2t plus 1 good votes. Now, to have uh, recall that we have 3t plus 1 parties in total. So we, we want that 2t plus 1 parties are going to be happy with their shares and whatever they saw. Um, so what happened when 2t plus 1 parties uh, vote, voted good, it means that only t plus 1 honest parties are actually happy with what they see because we might have t corrupted parties that, uh, that vote uh, on something which is incorrect or the dealer is malicious and t parties just vote good even though nothing is actually good. So what does it mean that we have only t plus 1 honest parties? It means that when the dealer broadcast and make publicly, public reveal a share of some party, so it needs to reveal both the F share and the G share. However, the F share is of degree 2T plus, two, it's of degree 2T. So we need 2T plus 1 points to actually fix that polynomial. However, we have only T plus 1 honest parties that see that polynomial. So this is a... Uh, so if we have only t plus 1 honest parties that broadcast good and say, okay, I'm happy with this public reveal polynomial, it doesn't mean that this f polynomial is actually correct because it is a polynomial of degree 2t and we just know the t plus 1, t plus one points are actually consistent with something that uh, the core of the honest parties that define the bivariate polynomial 
uh, is actually correct. So in other words, at the end of the protocol, we might have the case that some honest parties, uh, that some honest party that was, his share was publicly revealed, doesn't hold the correct F polynomial because it doesn't really agree with all the other honest parties or it agrees with T plus one honest parties, but it doesn't uniquely define the polynomial. So to avoid this problem, we simply give up and we ask the dealer to reveal only the G's polynomials whenever it is to publicly reveal a polynomial because the G's are of degree T. What does it mean? It means that at the end of the protocol of this sharing phase of, of polynomial of degree 2t, uh, there are going to be parties, honest parties, that don't have an F polynomial. They don't really have a share on the polynomial. We are going, uh, in the reconstruction, we are going to ignore those parties, and only those that voted good are going to contribute, to contribute in the reconstruction. So what do we have so far? So if the dealer is honest, then we know that the parties will going to extend subshares, everything is going to be correct, and the dealer will never have to reveal a polynomial of an honest party. This means that at the end of the protocol, there are going to be 2t plus 1 honest parties that have both the f polynomial and the g polynomial. When the dealer is corrupted, if the part is actually accepted the shares, it means that we have only t plus one honest parties that have both f and g. It means that during the reconstruction, we will need the help of the adversary in order to reconstruct. Let's see the reconstruction. So the reconstruction is going to be as follows. We're going, the dealer is going to broadcast this polynomial. This is a polynomial of degree t. And each party that has an f share is going to check the point, the intersection of those two polynomials, and if it's actually okay, and if this is the correct value, then it's going to say good or okay. And if two t plus one uh, parties are gonna say good, then we're going to accept this polynomial that was broadcasted and reconstruct the constant term. So, however, we have only t plus one honest parties that have correct f polynomial. This means that in actually to reconstruct, we must have the help, we must need the help in the case of a corrupted dealer of the corrupted parties in order to reconstruct the secret. However, we do have binding. What do we mean by that is that the dealer cannot now, um, if the parties accepted the shares in, in the sharing phase, the dealer cannot give a polynomial uh, that is different than the polynomial that uh, is defined by the shares of the t plus one honest parties. So during the reconstruction, either we are going to reconstruct the right, con the correct constant term, or we are going to reconstruct bottom, namely we know that something failed. This is, in other words, what we so-called weak secret sharing. There is binding, but reconstruction is not guaranteed. So our multiplication with the dealer looks like the following. So the dealer holds polynomials A and B, and the dealer shares a bivariate polynomial satisfying this relationship. So its constant term is a multiplication of these two polynomials. Each party is going to have a share on A and B and a share on the bivariate polynomial C. The dealer is going to define a single one polynomial dxy which has degree 2t and x and degree t and y such that the following relationship holds. So this is dx0 equals ax times px minus cx0. Note that on 0, if indeed a uh, c00 equals a0 times b0, then the constant term of D is supposed to be zero. Each party is going to verify that this relationship actually holds. So we look at this polynomial and this polynomial, and we try to find if those two polynomials are actually the same. If they are not the same, broadcast complaint, we are going to reconstruct, see that uh, um, 
if something uh, we can publicly reveal the shares of a party that um, that broadcasted a complaint and we can publicly reveal if the complaint is true or not. And then after we did all of that and we actually see that those two polynomials are the same, the dealer is going to publicly reveal this polynomial t0 and y and all the parties can publicly verify that the constant term is zero. Now recall this is just a weak secret sharing. So it might be that this reconstruction is not going to work, but if it doesn't work, we don't care because this means that the dealer is corrupted and we can reconstruct A and B and learn the constant term. So essentially, we just need to share here one secret sharing. We need to do only one VSS of a degree 2t polynomial, but instead of having verifiable secret sharing, we just have weak secret sharing. Let's just uh, see it in a picture. So the dealer is going to define a univariate polynomial, this one, that's going to satisfy dx of 0 equals ax times bx minus cx 0. Okay, so it's going to share the polynomial c that its constant term is supposed to be a times b. And then it's going to choose a polynomial d that satisfies this, this uh, equation. Um, so it's going to choose just this univariate polynomial in degree 2t and build a bivariate polynomial on top of it. It's going to do a secret sharing of that, uh, or weak secret sharing of that degree 2t polynomial. And during the reconstructions, the parties are going to reveal, the dealer is going to reveal this polynomial. But this polynomial reveals nothing because uh, the dealer the corrupted part is already, it, this is a polynomial of degree t. The corrupted part is already hold t shares on this polynomial, and they already know, or supposed to know, that d of 0, 0 is equal 0. I mean, otherwise, we have a problem, and we need to uh, reject the sharing of the dealer anyway. What about the bonus? So, so far, we looked at how to do one single multiplication. We can also look at uh, more complicated gadgets. Uh, in fact, any sub-circuit with uh, multiplication depth 1 or any uh, layer in our entire circuit. Each party can compute this uh, sub-circuit on all the shares of the inputs that it has. And this, and then prove using one single VSS per output wire that this was actually computed correctly. So for conclusion, we show improvement of a classical protocol for secure computation, which also significantly simplifies the protocol. The pro protocol also beats the state-of-the-art protocols for some applications, as we said, for shell or white circuits. And for some applications, our protocol also achieves sublinear communication complexity. This is the first time that, from the best of our knowledge, this is the first time that uh, happens in the perfect setting. So thank you so much for listening.